Advanced Placement Calculus, BC, Lesson 8.4, Lengths of Curves. How do you find the length of a curve? We've done volume. Uh, we've touched on surface area, but we're actually going to get that now. Well, if you have a curve and you want to know how long it is, a great way to check it is to say, well, let's break it into little pieces. And to find the length of that piece, you need to do the Pythagorean theorem. So if you're changing x and you're changing y, then your length of that individual curve will be the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. Well, this is classic calculus. We take those bits and pieces and make it smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually it will actually add up to the entire curve. But we need to sum them up. And the sum comes an integral quite quickly um, and we're going to multiply everything by delta x over delta x so we can create the derivative we want. So that's delta x squared plus delta y squared. We'll leave one delta x on the outside, put the other one inside and then the bottom one. When we put that in it's got to go in as delta x squared. leave the other one over here. These cancel of course and become 1 and what we're left with is the integral from some limits we don't know. It depends. 1 plus dy dx squared dx. So there they are. The length of a smooth curve. What's smooth? We'll come back to that from a at AC and ends at BD, where A is less than B, C is less than D. What's with all the letters? Well, because we can do it with respect to the Y, and we can do it with respect to the X. So we have to have a couple of different intervals for that. So what's the length of Y equals sine of X from 0 to 2 pi? Rather than write this in, I am going to go over here and say dy dx equals cosine of x, 1 plus cosine squared x dx. Can we do some substitution, then a square root? If it, well, maybe. I honestly don't know. And quite frankly, I don't really want to. So we blast it out in our calculator, and we find out get 7.64, which should be rounded to three decimal places, and that's just units. We'll leave it like that. So let's try it again. Exact length of the curve. Well, let's take the derivative first. That's what we need to plug in. It's 3 over 2 times 4 root 2 over 3 times x to the 1 half, which equals... 2 root 2, x to the 1 half. Length equals 0 to 1. 1 plus, I'm going to square this on the fly. Nah, that's kind of rude, I won't. Naughty me. Let's do a little substitution, see what happens. U equals 1 plus 8x. Du equals 8dx. Du over 8 equals dx. So, um, should I change the limits? Yeah, why not? U of 0 equals 1, U of 1 equals 9, uh, square root is U to the 1 half, so I'm actually going to do this on the fly because I'm running out of space, so we get U to the 3 halves divided 2 over 3, limit from 1 to 9, 
which is square root of 9 is 3, 27, 9, 18, minus, I feel like I'm doing something very, very wrong. And yeah, we'll keep going. 18 minus 2 thirds. Mm, I've done a huge number of mistakes. Mm, I got my 8. Naughty, naughty, naughty. So when I substitute that in, I needed to bring the 8 in. So 3 times 8 is 24. 7. Blast it all out, you should get 13.6. I'm going to actually check that, which is bad use of my time on the video, but I'm actually very, very interested to see if I did that right. Holy mackerel, I did. Cool. It's done differently elsewhere. Um, what was that word on the previous page? Smooth. It means it's uh, continuous and differentiable. On the curve. Interval, I should say, on the interval on the curve because something may not be differentiable the curve may have an asymptote or something like that it's like no big deal because we're just taking a chunk where it is so how about a uh, vertical tangent or a cosorner aka a cusp or corner well we'll start with the vertical tangent y equals x to the one third looks something like this And if we go from negative 8 to 8, that should be a comma setting. We're covering a 0, so we can't do that. Um, we can't take that derivative in the middle. It's going to cause us some problems. Um, so here's what we do. y equals x to the 1 third y to the third equals x. And now we can do it. So this is where we had that. Let's take it with, re, um, with respect to the y-axis. Because from the y perspective, it's horizontal uh, derivative, which equals 0. And that's not a problem. So the length is now from negative 2 to 2 of square root 1 plus uh, x embarrassing. Y to the third squared dy. No. And now this is the problem, and I'm actually almost glad I made that mistake. There's just so many little extra steps on these. So we do dx dy 3y squared, and that is what goes in here. Can we use the symmetry here? Maybe. I wouldn't mess with it at this time. Whew. Can we do the exact integral? Maybe. I'm not in the mood. Blast it out in your calculator. 17.26. That's a lot going on. Look for it. Keep your eyes open for it. Could cause you some serious problems. we got to graph this one. This could be a little problem trying to get my calculator to fit in the uh, picture here. But we'll do what we can. Nice tangent curves. And that'll have to do. Clear and... Graphing x squared minus 
four times the absolute value x minus x. I know I've had this set on trig, so zoom it normal. And look at that. It's got a cusp in the middle. At least it looks like a cusp. But if you think about it, it's got an absolute value. We should have a cusp somewhere in there. So what do we do? Well, if we're taking the that picture in mind something like this if we are going for the length we just have to break it into pieces so the length is going to be integral from negative 4 to 0 uh, I gotta take the derivative of this thing and I can throw the absolute value out so let's do it down here dy dx 2x minus 4 minus 1. Yeah, uh, we should rewrite this. If we're on this side of the curve, what's going on? We have a negative inside. It absolute values it. So we're really looking at plus 3x, really. I mean, it's, it's really, this is becoming positive. We put a negative and it should go negative. So this side of the curve is like x squared plus 4x minus x, x squared plus 3x. This side of the curve is uh, not changing, it's in the positive world, so it's x squared minus 5x. So, um, let's do the derivative. Twice, 1 plus 2x plus 3 squared dx plus 1 plus 2x minus 5 squared dx. All said and done, 19.56. Tricky stuff. My final note on the lesson is I can't tell you how many times I've had to enter things in my calculator just because it keeps coming out wrong. There's so many little details. Oh, I got to take the derivative. Oh, I got to break it up. Oh, I got to break it up and check the equations. It, it makes it challenging. So take your time and get it right. And as always, happy mathing.